Hey, Rendo, Steve here. Welcome back to Wrestle Juice. So in the last video here at Wrestle Juice, I reacted to my own video where I gave you guys my predictions for what I thought was going to main event every WWE premium live event of 2024. I was terrible at it i got a lot of stuff wrong Roman Reigns. no it's not gonna be that it did they wanted that for wrestlemania you idiot it's kind of embarrassing the only thing i got right was the most obvious one and that was roman reigns versus cody rhodes night two of wrestlemania now i did that video on january 7th so it was like super early in the year yeah my predictive powers were not very good so i thought i would give it another shot maybe a little vindication and i'll go back at the end of the year and i'll look at this video and I'll probably get a lot of stuff wrong. I hope not, but my track record so far is not very good. So on this video, I'm going to take a look at what I think is going to main event the premium live events for the rest of 2024. How many do I have here? I've got seven chances at vindication here at a little bit of retribution. Not That's not the right word. Let's go ahead and dive into this. First up, this is happening... <laughs> This coming weekend, Clash at the Castle. This isn't even, I don't even know if this is going to be right or not. You would think that Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest would main event Clash at the Castle, given that Drew McIntyre is from Scotland. And there's a very good chance he's going to win that world title. And so that's going to be my pick. But Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles in an I Quit match is happening at Clash of the Castle. That very well could main event because Cody Rhodes is Cody Rhodes. And at this point, let's be honest, the Raw World title is sort of treated like a mid-card title in comparison. But it's Drew McIntyre. He's probably going to win this thing, so that's got to main event. Right? I don't know. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be Drew versus Priest. That's got to be the main event. Let's move on to Money in the Bank in Toronto. Now, last year, the men's Money in the Bank match, I believe, opened up the entire show. The reason why you don't have men's Money in the Bank main event, which is what happened the year prior, if you have a world title match later in the card, guess what? You're setting up a potential same show cash in, and those are always very exciting. So what I think is going to happen in Toronto Toronto is the ultimate blow-off match between Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. Now, I don't think for a second Cody is going to lose at Clash of the Castle setting this match up, but it also feels like a feud big enough to warrant several matches. It seems kind of obvious at this point that WWE really loved the reception to the AJ-Cody match they had two pay-per-views ago, two premium live events ago, whatever. Um, and so they want to revisit this maybe for a couple matches. So my guess is they're in Toronto. You're going to have Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton. I'm sorry, can't Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles 3. And I don't know what that match will be. Maybe they'll do like a Hell in a Cell thing, which could clear the way for somebody to cash in. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I feel like it's safe to say that Cody Rhodes is going to main event that one. Whether or not it's going to be against AJ Styles, I don't know. But I can see that taking place. Let's move ahead to SummerSlam because that's the next premium live event on the schedule. Cody Rhodes, once again, will be main event. This time, I kind of feel like it's going to be against Randy Orton. They have a ton of history, of course, with the legacy stuff. So it seems natural at some point they got to get to Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton so Cody can get that win over his own or over his old mentor. And at the very end of SummerSlam, after the main event, Roman Reigns comes back and just sort of maybe has a face off with Cody Rhodes. And then we dive into the Roman Reigns bloodline storyline, you know, Roman Reigns versus bad bloodline story. And then eventually at some point in the year, The Rock comes back. But before we get there, let's move ahead to Bash in Berlin. Of course, Gunther is going to be main eventing there. Now, Gunther is going to have a SummerSlam match because he won King of the Ring. He's going to have a SummerSlam match against... Uh, whoever the world heavyweight champion is at the time, probably Drew McIntyre. It wouldn't shock me to see Drew McIntyre get his own faction in the form of Gallus. That's right. I kind of feel like there's the possibility that while we're at Clash of the Castle, part of what's going to help Drew McIntyre get that title is going to be the Gallus boys. Now, if that's the case, they could help Drew McIntyre beat Gunther at SummerSlam, and then maybe, just maybe, Gunther can invoke some sort of rematch clause, although, I don't know, maybe he could win a match or two in order to get that rematch in Berlin, where you once again have Gunther versus Drew McIntyre for the world title. Maybe 
in Berlin, Gunther actually wins it. I'm not here predicting winners and losers. I'm just saying what I think is going to happen in terms of the main event. You figure you're in Berlin, you're Gunther, you're going to main event, and the guy that's got the title is probably going to be Drew McIntyre. So Drew McIntyre is going to be the opponent for Gunther in Berlin. I don't know how that's all going to shake out. Kind of feels like they have an opportunity here to play some hot potato with that title throughout the rest of the year. Or once Gunther gets his hands on that title, that'll sort of be it. Drew will be, I'm not going to say necessarily a transitional champion, but maybe he'll be a bit of a transitional champion. Maybe CM Punk and him will move on to their feud finally and uh, and mix it up a little bit. So yeah, I don't know how it's, it's all going to work out, but I don't know, maybe, hell, maybe CM Punk will win money in the bank and then he'll want his match at SummerSlam and so they'll have to do a triple threat uh, Gunther versus CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. God, I've got a headache now. Let's move on to Fastlane, which hasn't even been announced yet, but it wouldn't shock me if they got some local municipality or some sort of government to put up the money to bring Fastlane to their fine city. How about the government of Paraguay puts up the funds and we have Fastlane down there in Paraguay. Coming to you live from Ascension. My mom's from Paraguay. That's why I'm, I'm name dropping that. Uh, we've got the main event for Fastlane, which given that we've got this bad bloodline storyline playing out right now, maybe just maybe heading into Survivor Series, they're going to want to start building up bad bloodline versus good bloodline. And I think it's at Fastlane that we get Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa. However, this ends up playing out sets up the November 2nd Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia. That's where we get Tribal Chief versus Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns versus Solo Sokoa. Roman Reigns comes back and is like, Solo, you've been lying this whole time. I haven't, I haven't talked to you at all. So who are you getting your orders from? And then at Crown Jewel, after the main event, we find out, throw your L's up, it was the final boss this whole time. He's been the puppet master for this bad bloodline. That leads us to the Survivor Series main event, which is Bad Bloodline, The Rock, Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, the right-hand man, Tonga Loa, the infamous, is that what they're calling him now? And Jacob Fatu versus the good bloodline, which I guess would be Roman Reigns, the reformed Usos, probably Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, although maybe, just maybe, so he doesn't get uh, lost in the shuffle, you put Cody Rhodes in that match, and he's in the good bloodline. He's helping out the bloodline here. Maybe that's a possibility. I kind of like my other idea better on that last video, where I said it would be not quite the shield versus not quite the legacy. You check out that video and see what the hell I'm talking about here. But anyways... And then that's going to be it. That's They're not going to do any pay-per-views in December. That closes out the year in WWE. The next one will be day one, 2025. Is it just me or is this year going by ridiculously fast? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think is going to main event. All these premium live events heading into 2024, the second half of it. By the way, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys around.